glossy um, full bottom. It's, I don't know how to say it, but it's like gives you the bubble butt uh, look in this pant, which is common in a boxer. If you, a lot of boxers, if they don't have a center back seam, they'll have two seams offset from the center back. It's really more comfortable. It also gives a fuller fit. Um, that's how this is set up. So let's cut out, very easy, just two little pattern pieces and head over to the sewing machine. One thing I don't like that is going to happen in these pants is my center back, which is on the fold, is going to get put on the fold line that was in the fabric. So it's pretty creased. This is an underwear or pajama pants, so it's not something we're going to be wearing out in public personally, but if you're making these sort of like the little sorority shorts that the girls wear, you may not want that line across the rear end because you're appliquing over it. So if that's the case, refold your fabric so that there, your center back isn't on the fold line. That, I could do that. I have enough fabric to do that. Refold it, cut out the center back, and then cut your two fronts. It's very possible um, to make it that way, to do it that way, if you have the wide enough fabric. And this is a 60 inch wide fabric that I'm working with. So it comes out easy. You don't even need a whole yard if it's 60 wide to get these shorts, which is kind of neat. And I have enough here. I can definitely get two pair of boxers out of this. And I have just about a yard here. Pretty good. Okay, I'm ready to cut. This pattern also comes in three lengths and I am doing the longest length of the three. It has like a super shorty short. line in here and adding my interfacing to the fly fronts. I've cut two strips that are about an inch and a quarter wide and um, just a little shy of the length of my fly front to help reinforce for buttonholes and buttons. Even if you never iron again, iron while sewing. Pressing in your seams, pressing your project flat makes it look more professional. It um, embeds the stitching into the garment a little bit, which also gives those seams a much flatter and more attractive look. It just does so many things. So I'm going to take my little pieces of interfacing and I'm not putting it right on the edge because we're folding in this edge, so it doesn't need to be interfaced there. I'm moving it back a little bit. We're gonna turn it in about a quarter of an inch, so I just wanna make sure I've got sticky side down, always important and I'm at least a quarter of an inch from that edge. And then we'll press these in. If you have problems with when interfacing that you somehow always get the glue or you don't want it and it sticks to your iron, get one of these little silicone mats. You can put it underneath or on top. It'll keep you from ironing it, gluing it to your ironing board and from gluing it to your iron. Now we're gonna have a right and a left on this because one flaps over the other. One's for buttonhole, one's for button. They're gonna be slightly offset. So it's important to pay attention to our right front and our left front. When I put on iron, I don't, or put on interfacing, you don't iron it, you press it. So I'm pushing straight down. Someday I'm going to get one of those flat presses for pieces like this. It's great for doing collars and so forth. And again, you want this on the wrong side. So I am on page six of the in, um, instructions. The first thing it talks about is our little side vents have this little tiny edge that sticks out. She calls it the, they call it the protruding edge. We are going to be folding that to the inside. So I currently have the right side up. This is my wrong side. We're gonna fold it over so that it's even with the, with the cut edge above it, and then we're gonna snip in the depth of that. It actually shows on the pattern how far to snip in and roll it one more time. So here's our little protruding edge. We're gonna fold this in and iron it, and then we're going to clip just that deep.
here's our first fold and you can see I've snipped the depth of that which is about a quarter of an inch and then this is going to get folded again right to the depth of the stit of that snip not farther so it's nice and flat like that and we're going to press it so we're going to do that for all four sides so on all the sides for the vent and then it says to come and roll the bottom up now I always do the bottom first and then roll the side and that's because I don't like to see on the side of my pant I don't like to see that um, and if you roll this first and then this from the side it'll be flat instead of seeing that so that's my personal preference I don't think it matters I think you could do it either way they have you doing the side first but I think you could easily do the bottom first if you wanted to okay so we're going to just do that for all four sides and when I get that all pressed and we're doing that on the bottoms and the sides so that we're kind of getting all of the hemming done then it has us also do the top waist for a half an inch down and they make a few little clips and that's good because the waistline is um, especially in the back can you see that slight curve it's not perfectly straight so if you make a couple little clips and I think she even has a notch mark yeah if you make a little clip where that little notch mark is it will make it um, open up a little bit for you to fold down that half inch it will make your life a lot easier so I'm going to press all of those things when they're pressed I'll come back and show you how everything looks Six, and I've added interfacing so now we're going to move to page seven so far all we've done is pressed there's no sewing yet on page seven of our instructions um, where it's called folds continued and now we're going to work on our flies so I'm going to move the back out of the way for a moment and we're going to put our two fronts up here and I'm going to lay them so this is my left front and this is my right front so I've got them facing me that way just like the picture right side as you're looking at it not right side as on the body doing this again as the extension sticks out on the right side but not the right side of the body just the right side of the project duh of course that's what it meant so for part a and this is for the front that is the right side that's why it looks the way it does and that's why I made a mistake okay so we're gonna mark our three inches so I know exactly where that is so I know where to snip to boop, boop, boop. and I'm gonna mark my inch and a half at the top and the bottom so I'm folding correctly so here's the first inch and a half fold and you can see my little snip right there so when I fold this again it's going to be like that. 
keeping it nice and straight, and then we're gonna press up. And then this, of course, uh, needs to stay folded in. So we want to make sure when we're pressing this that this stays down like that. That's how it looks up here. Okay, so that's the right side. So we're gonna press that, and then we're gonna come back and do the left. So once we get this pressed over twice on the right side, can you see where it says stitch? They're just stitching a little bit up here at this top edge to hold it down. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna come over and we're gonna do our left side. So that's the little tiny stitching that we did. All right, now we're gonna move over to the other side where I had originally done it wrong because I was thinking right side of the body, not right side of the project. So here we go. I'm gonna press this back out flat real quick. Now we're going to fold back a quarter of an inch, which is this edge, which is why I left that off like that. So we're gonna fold this back and press it. I just love all the pressing parts. I like how pressing it ahead of time just makes it go where it belongs and makes your life easy. So once I've pressed that, we're gonna take our little ruler, we're gonna measure an inch and a quarter and we're gonna to fold to that inch and a quarter line, which is just about exactly right down where I originally had it. Yep, that's where it is. Okay, so we're gonna fold it again. Loveliness. And we're gonna press it again. And we're going to stitch that little thing at the top one more time. All right, so we have done our quarter of an inch, and then we've done our inch and a quarter. It looks like this, it should hang over. You should have a little hooky do on one side. One shot side should be all the way into our seam allowance there, and the other side should be sticking out. We're gonna do a little stitch right across the top, just like we did here. Let's go do that little stitch real quick. I'm stitching really close to the edge because that's what it looks like on the picture. Do you trim as you go or do you leave your project all hairy and give it a haircut at the very end? All right, we're ready for now, page eight. So we're going to take our back piece. Now we've not stitched down any of our hems or anything. We're gonna put the back piece right side up. We're going to take our side seam pieces and we're gonna line them up. Quarter inch seam allowance on the side seams. So you could serge this right up be real careful so you don't cut something you don't mean to. And you're folding up. So see here's the little waist where we've pressed. We're gonna fold that back up. We're gonna stitch all the way across and we'll come back and repress that little corner. You can also straight stitch and zigzag, which is what they show in the directions. So we're pinning together this side seam right here and nothing is sewn yet on this. So see, these are free. We're gonna just sew straight up. We're gonna open this back up to sew all the way across and then zigzag this edge if you want to or serge it. I'm just gonna serge this together. I'm gonna to put it under the serger so that I'm, I start and stop right where this cut is. You do not want to serge below where that little nip is. So I'm gonna do that for both side seams. So here's the first one and then they show. See, they show this is what your little vent's gonna be like. So we'll come back and fix the vent. We're gonna go ahead and get our side seam done to here. And I think we're gonna do it for both sides. All right, to the serger. All right, I'm serging this side seam right here and here I'm getting ready to come to this little vent and this is how I do it, I'm get rid of that pin. We're going to move these little things kind of out of the way and we're gonna serge right up to that little clip and see how I'm kind of holding them out of the way. Can you see that? So they're not underneath there. See, I didn't catch them at all just how I wanted it. For the other side seam, I'm starting at the clip and sewing down. So, super easy. We're gonna go ahead and just press these side seams to the back, get them out of the way, and then we're going to address our little vents down here. And these now should press exactly how they're supposed to, yep. Press the seam allowance over to one side for added reinforcement, top stitch through all layers. So you could, if you want to, now top stitch over the seam um, and hold it, just to hold everything down if you wanted to. We've done both of the side seams. 
now it is having us do the front crotch. So now we're going to come back. Here's our front, front crotch. We're going to flip this around right sides together and it has a little clip in it. So I would recommend for this one, you go ahead and go to your sewing machine, straight stitch it first and then zigzag it or, or uh, surge it. But we're going to go ahead and put in the front crotch. So it's just this little thing below the little fly. We're going to just sew this little curvy spot right there. And then we're ready to start the, this is going kind of fast. It's a different way than I would have done it in my head, but it works. All right, so there's the crotch. Let me show you real quick. I just did a little trick over the sewing machine. I'm going to show you what I did. I'm going to do a little close up here for you because my little vents were just a little bit off. Not, I mean, less than an eighth of an inch, but it's all in how deep you snip and if you snip just slightly off. So let me show you. All right, so here's my little vents at the side. And can you see the stitching that I did right here? I went back and I straight stitched just a tiny bit to make sure that the vent snip where I snipped and the seam lined up perfectly because can you see my threads hang off? I was off that much with my surging and it made a difference at the vent. So on both vents, I just went back and did a straight stitch. You want that straight stitch to line up right with where you snipped on the vent on your side seam, very important. So now I have my side seams in. Um, I've done my crotch seam. Here's the crotch, just that little bit. Again, it lines up with their snip. I may have to come in and do, again, the same thing where I straight stitch a tiny bit right in there. I will see when I'm ready to put it together. We're now going to cut our elastic. So you cut your elastic according to your size that you did. I'm gonna get a 34 inch piece out. And then it has where to space. And that's just so that you get your elastic nice and even. I'm gonna do one inch or one and a quarter inch elastic. Let me grab my elastic. Okay, we are going to do the spacing thing that they show on the bottom of page nine. And you're going to always start on the left side here and work to the right side because it's, and it's how it matches up at the waist flap later. So we're doing, uh, for my size, every four and a half inches, we're gonna put a little mark. And when you do it this way, one side's going to be shorter than the other. You, they won't come out perfectly evenly and that's intentional. They know that and they include for that. So this side has less at the end than this side. There's four and a half inches from the edge over here. And on mine, this side is two inches from the edge. We're gonna take the longer side, the side that is four and a half inches from the edge. We're gonna go to our waist over here and we're going to slide this into the waistband up here, right inside that flap, all the way to the edge. So I, it's meeting the end of my little fold here. So after we've done that, before we go any farther, they have us go ahead and edge stitch this on. This elastic should be close to the edge, but not over it. So I'm going to show you over at the sewing machine. Okay, we're going to edge stitch. And you can see how I have my elastic up here close to the edge, but not quite over it, gonna work. So that is how it's going to look, and it should be close to the edge up here. So now we're going to take the shorter spacing. It's gonna go all the way over on the other side. Make sure you don't twist your elastic when you're doing this. So the shorter end is not pushed all the way over. It's just underneath the flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it down too, and then I'm gonna come back and do the pinning. They pin and then stitch. You could do it either way. This is what I'm going to do. It kinda of holds everything in place. All right, so now we have all of these markings. So the second marking, you'll have one in the middle. The second marking should line up with your side seam. And we're going to just pin that on the side seam there. And that's the second marking as I'm working from left to right. And then the middle marking will go right in between. So if I stretch this out, that's where I'm gonna put that pin. And so now you can see, I like mine tighter than that, but this isn't for me, this is for my hubby. He probably will appreciate it this way. Same thing over here. Second one from working from right to left is side seam. And we are pinning this so that we have just a tiny bit of our fold at the top and we are going to be covering that whole raw edge with our elastic. 
All right, so now we're at the back. You will have a center back marking, and that's the center back of your garment. So let's find my center back again. And that's going to line up with my middle dot of my elastic. So they make this super easy for you for quartering. They actually do a little more than quartering, so you will have no issues with your elastic. Trying to always pin so that we have, so we're just below the folded edge. It should look like the diagram at the bottom of page 10. You have, you can see how your elastic is going to work. When pinning this in, here's my short end, and you can you see how I'm just pinning right below that fold all the way around. You can see the fullness. So now we're ready to come to the sewing machine and we're going to straight stitch it down. So when you're straight stitching this, I'm gonna sink my needle right here. Can you see this is where I've sunk the needle? Now you will actually be stretching as you sew. So you want to, you don't want to pull from behind, but you want to hang on to this because if you're pulling only in the front, you can pull your, um, you can pull it forward and mess up your stitching. So I'm gonna be pulling down here and hanging on the back, which means I can't do this with the handheld camera. All right, I'm gonna remove all these pins. This is how it looks on the outside. This is how it looks on the inside. And then we're gonna go back and just stitch again at the bottom edge. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're just stitching down on the other end um, just to make it nice and tight. I see what they're doing. They're having us do it quite a few times. We're going to line everything up before we go any farther. We're gonna make sure everything lines up down here at the crotch. This is the right side, okay? This is the one that's been doubled over and this is the one that has the quarter inch seam allowance. So we're gonna flip it. So this is what it looks like on the inside. And these lay right on top of each other like this, okay? I'll be right back. The dog needs out. Got to go take care of doggy. I'll be right back. Well, the dog did not need out. She was tattling on her little sister cat. The front door blew open and the cat decided to go on an adventure. She's not supposed to go outside. She's an indoor only cat. And the dog did a big sister good job and tattled on her. <laughs> she was just standing there tattling. The dog didn't go out. The dog stayed where she was supposed to. It's funny how you can tell the different barks. Now we're back to lining all of this up. I am going to re-sew right here at the crotch just a tiny bit. It's just uh, because I searched it, I didn't get quite close enough, which is not a big deal. Personally, I probably am gonna come back and do one more line of stitching down the middle of this because I just think it's gonna be cuter. Let me show you how the inside of this crotch is gonna go. All right, we're on the inside of the pants here. I've just got them overlapped and just pinned to hold it in place for now. Down here at the crotch, this is where I searched it together. And can you see, I don't, I'm a little farther away than I'd like to be from this fold line. So I'm going to just take my uh, straight stitch sewing machine. I'm gonna straight stitch up till I meet this little fold line and stop. That's really important. It's gonna make all of this lay nicely. And that's what they're showing here. So now that we've got this lined on top of each other, like so, they're folding in this edge. And that's gonna give you, so you don't have any raw edges right there. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're folding them in independently. See, they folded in this one and then they folded in this one. But once they're folded in, we're gonna to top stitch all of this. We know they overlap and they fit, but before we do anything else, we need to edge stitch this side. So we're going to take this side, this side, the one that has the quarter inch, and we're going to edge stitch down at the sewing machine. A lot of times people will stitch this on the wrong side. I don't like to, I always like to stitch on the right side because the stitch is slightly different and I think it looks nicer. So let's head over to the sewing machine. So I've restitched right here at this little crotch mark just to make sure that everything lines up right. And this is the side that has the quarter inch turned under. And we're gonna go ahead and top stitch that. I'm gonna flip it to the right side. Um, that's up to you which side you flip it from, but I personally prefer to always do my top stitching whenever possible on the right side. And I'm actually gonna line it up. I'm gonna start up here, see where I ended my stitching. I'm gonna start right there. Careful as you're moving this around because you do have this cut edge, your fabric could easily catch and tear. 
This is pretty fragile right in here for now, so we're gonna be really careful. So I have pinned together. Here's my inner and my outer. You can see they're slightly offset, so I don't catch both pieces. You want this to be open. And I fold it under. Now here's the part that gives me the most issue is just this little area right here. So I'm actually to come in and stitch zigzag over this little raw edge right here. And I'll probably even do a little more straight stitch right there. Cause I just don't like any raw edges that I, if I can help it, but we're now ready to top stitch all the way off of this onto this underneath piece and then edge stitch all the way up. Picture right here. So see they, how they go across the bottom, all the way off, all the way up, and then across the top. Okay, so you can see this is the part that I don't like where it's a little bit unfinished, but I'm gonna come back and either do some handwork or some zigzagging or something to take care of that. I've stitched straight across, and now I've come off onto the underneath side, and I'm ready to edge stitch all the way up. Just like that. Your edge stitching should line back up with your old stitching. Oh, I have a little hooky do. Oh, it just needs a haircut. And so we're gonna come up across here and then I'm gonna come across in this old stitching line too. It's looking good on the outside. It looks very nice and put together. At this point, we do not have a buttonhole or a button. And I have a feeling that's what they're gonna have us do next. Yep, okay, so after this, we're just gonna come back and we're gonna top stitch on the bottom half of this um, waistband, we're going to kind of meet up where the bottom elastic is across this just to make it a little more reinforced. Sometimes you'll see an X across there too, which you certainly could do. Um, sometimes you'll see where they put a piece of ribbon or another fabric, um, like an accent fabric over this, so lots of options. Bottom of the waistband here, or the bottom of the elastic part of the waistband, we're just lining up our things and we're going to make sure we line up with our old stitching line. Keep everything nice and neat and intentional looking. So we're gonna come down now. It's picture I on page 13. So here you can see on H where they've, um, they're showing the measuring here and they're coming up to an open and they're doing a little zigzagging down here, which is wise because it's gonna unravel. So we're going to do all of those things those little raw edges are, and I actually have just this little bit right here too, which is just making me unhappy. So I think I'm gonna zigzag this first. All right, I've just transferred the marking they did. I came up a half an inch from that edge. We are going to now top stitch it in place. Whoops, I've got my zigzag on. Let's try this again. And then we're gonna come down in our old stitching line Rotate this, make sure you're not catching any underneath layers. Gonna stitch back down till we get to this little raw edge and that's where we're gonna switch to our zigzag and we're gonna zigzag that little raw edge. of your pants look. We, the only thing that's left is the bottom hem and the crotch. So from the outside, it looks like this. Here's our open flap. So now I'm gonna come in and do my buttonhole and button on here. Um, we still have to do our crotch. So I'm looking to see, I've done this stitch already. So now it's ready for us to, oh, okay. They're top stitching down the crotch seam allowance. Okay, so if you don't want your fly open, they're saying go ahead and just top stitch this down too. But if you want an opening fly, which I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and do the buttonhole and button. So I'll show you how to do that. And then we're ready to do our crotch. See where in the middle of this fly, I want the buttonhole to go. Now, personally, I would have liked to have done the buttonhole and button before I sewed my fly closed at the top. Open this up, push that fly out of the way. Not my favorite way to do it, but it does work. So now um, it has us top stitching down that crotch seam, which you don't have to do that, but it certainly doesn't hurt. And we're gonna do that pretty close to the edge. 
Okay, so here's my little buttonhole, and here is the top stitched little crotch part. So now that we've done those things, I haven't put the button in yet. I'll come back and do that in a minute. We're now ready to do our actual crotch seam. Go right sides together. Now we haven't hemmed it yet. Our back little crotch. We're gonna line these up with each other and stitch them on. And we're gonna fold out that hem that we've pressed up for doing this stitching. And I'm gonna serge it. Um, if you're not serging, you're gonna do your quarter inch seam allowance and then come back and zigzag that raw edge. It's ready to be straight stitched or overlocked. I'm gonna overlock. So we have now got a little crush seam. We now have pants. So there, you're gonna press this seam towards the back and top stitch it. So I'm using the waistband opening as the big hole to look through to find the seam. So here you can see how it is on the machine. Here's my big waistband opening and I'm just got it all lined up inside that waistband so I can stitch right through and top stitch down just like this was done on this seam line. All right, we now have little pants and we're ready for hemming. The way they are doing it is they're stitching first the little side vent and then coming back and doing the bottom. You don't have to do it. You could definitely do this all in one. You do it however it's easiest for you though, especially if this is your first time doing something like this. There's a lot of little steps. Okay, I'm gonna put some pins in all of these hems and double check that I don't need to repress anything, which I think I probably will. All right, I'm pinned in. Here's my little vent on the outside. This is what it's like on the inside. And I want my seam allowances pressed to the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here. And you can either come straight across or you can do a slight angle and down, but I'm gonna start at this corner and I'm gonna, or this seam, and I'm gonna come across, down, turn, and go across. You can stitch all the way down, come back and cross your seam if you want to, because that'll keep this from being floppy back here. Um, but I, what I'm not going to do is have, at the, so you can see how my side seam is nice and smooth, I'm not going to have this at the side seam. I want that at the bottom. I just prefer the look, personally. So I'm full, that's where I'm, I'm slightly deviating from their directions. So let me get this into the machine and show you how it looks as I sew. So I started right here at this seam and I've sewn out and down, just catching that right on the edge. And then I've now turned, I've, let me pick a couple stitches so you can see here. Okay, I sewed all the way to the edge and then I came back and stitched the other direction so I crossed it. And I'm just gonna continue that. After I've gone all the way around, I'm gonna come back in this little corner and I'm gonna zigzag over this little area. And they actually show that on theirs. So they're doing all their stitching on the inside. I'm doing all of mine on the outside. That's personal preference. This is how the stitching looks at the top right now on the outside. And on the inside, you can see that's the little raw edges. And I will come back and I'm going to zigzag over that. That will take care of the raw edges and um, reinforce this also. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other leg and then we'll come back and do that. All right, we are ready to do our little bit of zigzagging over this to make it nice and secure. Now that I've gotten all of my little side stitching done, it just needs a press. And I'm gonna go ahead and do one more stitching through this waistband down the middle and put in my button and I'll show you how they look done. I'm gonna do my final little pressing here and there. Um, I went ahead and did an extra row of stitching in the waistband, which I think looks really nice. I've sewn on my little button in the front. All right, here's a few little close-ups for you so you can see how it looks. There's a cute little button and buttonhole. I think they turned out great. I'm really pleased with this pattern. Um, another independent pattern maker. That's awesome. And I have, this is the first pattern I've tried from them. It's called Sis Boom Sew, but it's pretty cute. 
There's the front fly. The stitching completely disappears on the cross grain there, but it's there. And I did go back and add an, another one in the center. Um, I just think it makes it look nice. Super cute, let me show you the back. The back has no um, seam, so there's really, they'd probably be really comfortable as a true boxer short. There's the inside stitching. Okay, side seams, great. All right, they're a little big for my tiny little dress form here, so I pinned it in the back, but you can see how it's supposed to sit a little lower on the hip, um, not on the true waistline. They look really cute. This is how the back would look. I always call it the bubble butt, and it is it is a specific style. It gives you a little bit fullness in the rear end. It's actually quite comfortable. It's comfortable to wear under your clothes um, with no back seam. See you next week for another fun video.